Hi everyone, welcome back. Let's have a look at another example of how to find the inverse Laplace transform. This one is going to be slightly different um, with using partial fractions. Okay, so this is our Laplace transform and we want to find the inverse of that. So we want to move from f of s into f of t, right? This is in your frequency domain because your variable in this case is s. You want to take it back into the time domain where your variable is t. We need to have a strategy when we find the inverse Laplace transform. And we're going to start with our denominator. If you look at the denominator, you want to find something on your formula sheet. This over here. That has the same form as what is on your formula sheet in your right hand column right now if you go and you look at our example here you have an expression worth one two three terms what you're going to find when you look at your formula sheet there is nothing on your table that has three terms now when you come to something like this the next question you need to ask yourself is can i factorize this denominator and in this case, yes, I can. So let's have a look. This can factorize to, we have our two brackets, S and S, 2 and 1, and that one's going to be minus, that one's going to be plus, right? So now you have a denominator where you have two factors. Right? Now, we can now split up this denominator using partial fractions because we know that if we write out 4s minus 5 over s minus 2s plus 2, that is equal to, it's going to be a over s minus 2 plus b over s plus 1, right? And if you look at these two terms here and you look at your denominator and you check on your table, right? If you check on your table, you'll see that the denominator is the same as the denominator on number 7 because you've got two different terms there. Right? So let's find those values of a and b. Now, using partial fractions, we can say, okay, so if we have a term on our left-hand side, right, and we've got two terms on our right-hand side, we can make that to have the same denominator, right, and that is going to be S plus 1, B, S, minus 2, right? So you have one expression equal to another. You have the same denominator, and that means your numerators have to be equal to one another. So we can then say, therefore, 4s minus 5 has to be equal to plus 1, s minus 2, right? Okay, now we can solve for a and b, right? And there are two ways that you can do this. You can either multiply out these brackets and then equate like terms, or you can choose values for s so that one of the terms adds up to zero. Right? So I'm going to do the second, the second way because it's the easiest one in this case. So I'm going to choose s to be 2. Let's start with that. Right? So if I substitute that in, I'm going to get 4 times 2 minus 5. A is going to be 2 plus 1. B, 2 minus 2. Right? So that term here is going to fall away because 2 minus 2 is 0. So that means you have no B. So then we've got 4 times 2 is 8 minus 5 is going to be 3. And this is going to be a to 
plus 1, so it's going to be 3, which means that A is going to be 1. Right? Then, in order to find your B value, I'm going to say, let S equal to minus 1. So we'll have 4 times minus 1 minus 5. A minus 1 plus 1, which is going to add up to 0. Minus 1 minus 2, that's going to be minus 4 minus 5, which means it's minus 9. That adds up to 0, that's going to be minus 3B, which means that B is going to be 3. Right? So now we've got both A and B. That means that our f of s, right, let's just go back here to see, this f of s here can be written as these two terms over there, right? So we can then say, f of s is equal to, A is 1, so it's going to be 1 over s minus 2 plus 3 over what is that s plus 1 right so there we've got a different form for f of s okay now if we look at our denominators and we go back to the table you'll see that that is number 7 now i've just rewritten that number 7 here so that it's easier for us to see. So you see you've got S minus B. So in this case, let me just fold this so that we can see it a bit clearer. You see, that is on our formula sheet. So you'll see in your first term you've got minus 2, right? So in this case, B is going to be 2. In your second term, you've got plus 1, which means that B is going to be minus 1. So we can write that as 1 over S minus 2, 3 times 1 over S minus minus 1, right? So now we've got our function in the same form as what is on the table, which means we can now find what f of t is. So f of t is going to be e to the 2t plus 3e to the minus t. And that over there is our inverse Laplace transform, which is what we were looking for.